Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Weston Boucher and today I'm going to cover 10 travel tips every guy should know and some life hacks and some things on what to pack to make your travel experience that much quicker and easier. Alright guys, so if it's your first time on my channel, welcome again. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do as I'm going to be bringing new videos to you each and every week, which I cover things from health and fitness to personal style, grooming, uh, travel tips, and uh, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff that will improve your quality of life hopefully. So um, today, like I said, I'm going to cover 10 travel tips uh, that have really worked well for me over the years. Um, I don't know everything, so it'd be awesome to hear your comments on anything that um, you know works well for you and has just made your travel experience freaking awesome. Um, for me, if I would have known these things like 10 years ago, I would have saved myself from a lot of crap because travel can be tough if you don't prepare properly and make it easier on yourself. So here we go, let's begin the countdown. All right, so before I do the actual countdown, if you wanna skip ahead at any point because you're like, oh, that's so obvious to me, I already do that. I assure you, if you get far, far enough along in the countdown, you're gonna find something awesome that's gonna work for you. So without further ado, number one, save time and skip the line. The Global Entry Pass, the TSA PreCheck, what's all that about and how do you get into this exclusive club? Um, it's really not that big of a deal and it's not that time consuming actually now that I've gone through the process and man is it worth it. I have uh, saved myself from missing flights because either I'm in unexpected traffic getting to the airport for my initial flight or you know there's issues where I get stuck going through security it just takes way too long. Um, so those type of things can all be avoided and in addition you oftentimes don't have to take off your shoes pull out all your stuff out of your bag, like your laptop, they'll just let you go through because you're pre-screened. So um, as far as uh, the US goes, I have included a link in the description on how to apply for that global entry pass, which is better than just TSA pre-check, uh, in my opinion. And it's $100 and you do an interview at some point, and literally once they schedule it, I think it took like five or 10 minutes and she asked me a few questions and that was it. And then they had the card for me soon after. So yeah, I highly suggest that in addition to a passport. Um, just look it up in your, your uh, respective country if you're not in the US and I'm sure there's something similar. Number two, so on the note of exclusive clubs and whatnot, try to get what's called a priority pass. Um, these are, um, things that are offered by various credit card companies in addition to whatever your membership is, but you can also get a priority pass just by simply going to their website. Um, I'm not being paid to say this. Uh, I think the starting price is 99 a year, but what it is is it gives you access to those airport lounges that are at many uh, larger airports across the world. And uh, for me, when you get stuck there and you have a layover or you just have a ton of time to kill, it's pretty amazing because you can oftentimes go in there and they, they have free drinks, free food, uh, free alcohol, um, the, the chairs and everything are more comfortable, they got TV, they got all sorts of things, printers if you need it or whatever, all sorts of resources. And in addition, you can also use the card to um, get discounts at certain uh, stores that are at the airport and you can get uh, money deducted um, off your overall bill at certain restaurants. Like uh, the last place I was at, it was a $28 discount, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I'll have a link to that in the description if you wanna check it out. Again, that's not something I was paid to say, but it has been awesome for me, and I hope it is for you too. Okay, number three, wait to board. I always am sitting there just like scratching my head like, why is everyone getting like so urgent to get on the plane right away? Because all that ends up happening is you stand in, in the gangway or, or uh, that connects to the plane and you just wait and wait and wait till everyone takes their sweet time to get in their chairs or whatever. Um, what I do is I just sit there till the very last second uh, because the, your, your boarding pass will often say when the doors close at, or at least the digital ones do. Um, and that's as much time as you have to kill to get on the plane. The only instances where I think that you need to do this are obvious if you fly with airlines such as Southwest Airlines where you literally don't have a seat assigned, so you need to get in there and choose your seat. Um, the second reason would be if you have a very precious item that you wanna make sure your carry-on gets in there, like maybe it's a guitar, or you just you do have a carry-on that you just wanna make sure gets on the plane. You don't want anyone saying, oh, we're gonna check that for you, and you know they grab it before you get on the plane. 
Um, I would do it in that instance so that you know that if it's a full flight, there's gonna be room still. Uh, but yeah, you know, other than that, I can't really see why you would want to rush to get on the plane. I mean, even when I'm the last one on, I still am waiting to take my seat. So yeah, it's, it saves you time and it's less annoying. Okay, make sure you stick around for what to pack. I'm almost there, hang in there, because that's where I think there's some really cool items that um, you can pack that are gonna make traveling pretty awesome. Um, all right, so where was I? Number four, choosing your seats. You need to choose your seats immediately when you book. Uh, a lot of flights fill up quick, and if you just wait, you might get stuck way at the back, right next to the bathroom, and everyone's just congregating, waiting, and then you know how that goes. Uh, pretty stinky place to be. Uh, and you might be at the very back where you don't get a reclining seat. Uh, you might get just stuck between two people. So I recommend immediately doing it. And in terms of the selection, um, if you can't afford first class, which I don't do, I think it's just outrageously priced anyways on um, principle alone. Uh, but I like to choose a couple seats up from the emergency exit rows. And the reason for that is I like to do time lapses out on my phone. I always pick a window seat I like not having someone at least on one side of me. And, uh, and you can also obviously see if there's any, if it's not a very full flight, pick a row where there's people haven't chosen it and it looks like there's no one next to you, obviously. You can get a really good view though, a couple seats up from the exit, the emergency row. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. The plane wing isn't there. So if your head's somewhere cool, um, I think it's worth it to kill time and enjoy the views. Um, besides that, um, yeah, I pretty much just stick with window seats and uh, there are a couple sections at the very front right before first class that have some extra leg room um, in addition to the emergency exit room that has some extra, extra leg room uh, that is going to um, probably not give you the window, that's the only catch, uh, but you will be able to stretch out a little bit. All right, number five. So killing time is a big part of it while you're on a flight. Um, if it's anything more than two hours you really need something to do. So I highly recommend uh, having your tablet or your device uh, ready to go. And what I mean by that is pre-install the apps that are gonna be used on your specific airline. Um, GoGo InFlight is one that's really common and a lot of airlines use it as kind of their standard to deliver free content and media and stuff for purchase your own device you don't have to worry about you know the plane having a screen or if it's a really small screen you can do it on your tablet uh, I have an iPad Pro so it's awesome because it's just huge screen super thin and I have the app installed in advance and I can watch a lot of free movies and I actually have really good selection so I suggest that you do that beforehand because otherwise you might have to buy Wi-Fi just to download the app just to find out that they won't let you download it because it's too big because <laughs> that's what happened to me so yeah, try to get it pre-installed. Okay, number six, packing your personal item. So this isn't the carry-on, but this is the one that you wanna get some really, really crucial essential stuff that you gotta have. Um, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is have one of these RFID safe uh, passport and ID holders. Um, you probably heard at some point that people will literally be at the airport and they can use devices to, to intercept your personal data. And so a really simple uh, uh, travel case like this will prevent like your passport and your global entry card and all that from anything getting swiped. Um, as far as I know, I could be wrong. Comment below or troll or whatever and let me know if not. But I like to go with this anyways and it's just, it's just easy access. And whether or not I look nerdy, I don't really care. I can keep it on uh, like, a, like a necklace and I can just grab it right away and just makes uh, going through the process of the airport that much quicker than digging down into my bag. So yeah, there's that. Uh, let's see, what else? I'm just gonna grab this list right over here that you didn't even know is right there. And I'm gonna dive into everything really quick. So um, I recommend bringing a small USB adapter. This is one of the uh, ones, it's, it's an Apple device related, but they have them for um, either uh, device type if, if you have Android. But I find that it's really handy to have one that's small like this because a lot of airlines actually don't uh, except like the larger uh, wall wards, they, they won't fit. And even though you might be like, oh sweet, I have this new four port USB charger and you try to pop it in, it just drops out over and over. I've just found certain airlines like it's hit and miss. So 
But every time I bring a smaller one like this, I'm guaranteed to at least be able to charge a device in an emergency. Um, and they do have dual port ones as well. And uh, oh yeah, everything I mentioned, um, I have in my Amazon shop. So if you want the exact ones I use, um, that link's gonna be in the description. And I have categories and there's one called travel must-haves. So check that one out. Those are all the things I actually use and recommend. Uh, but feel free to buy them from wherever you want. Um, so the next thing I have is empty water bottle. Seems obvious, doesn't have to be you know, like this, but this is super light. I'm always looking for everything to be light. But you know how much I've spent over the years just because I didn't think to just bring this stupid thing on water at the airport? I mean, it's like $4 sometimes minimum for something really small. So just this is gonna save you time all year and it's super light. Obviously go through security with an empty. All right, so I'm all about keeping my devices charged because when you're traveling, your phone is everything. You have so many uh, things that you need to use it for. So I am just taking every precaution to make sure I have full battery life because when you travel, you probably notice that your phone dies at a rapid pace for whatever reason. If it's roaming, I'm not sure what it is, uh, but I just find that to be the case. Um, so on that note, make sure you bring uh, a fast charge uh, multi-port USB charger. Um, the one I actually found in my Amazon shop is a newer version of this one. It's even better. That has four ports. So I'm actually going to order that one soon as well. Even this has two. Um, obviously bring relative cables. Um, I bring uh, a few that are for my specific device and I bring one that will charge. The next item I'm going to bring up is the external batteries. This is a fast charge external battery with at least two ports I recommend. Um, and it charges it extremely fast and it holds a charge for a long time. And you can also uh, bring a cable so you make sure it's a specific one. You wanna pack that as well so you can charge the actual charger. Uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, so I'm big on charging like I said. So I even have one for when I am taking a Lyft or Uber uh, from the airport or wherever to keep my phone charged. So it's a fast charge one, it has two ports on it. And um, yeah, I just find that whether you get a rental car um, or you're just taking lots of lifts, um, there's just lots of instances where it's really easy to just pop this in and you have a cable with you and you can charge while you're driving from place to place. Little wireless Bluetooth remote. This is awesome when you travel because uh, there's just many instances where you might want to take a photo with somebody. And you know, when you travel, maybe with just one other person, like sometimes me and Kay travel, uh, it's, it's like either us taking a picture of just, you know, or just one of us taking a picture of the other because we can't both be in it and we don't want a selfie every time. So if we can set that wherever on a tripod and then this will go, this will work with any device, Android or iPhone, and it's even got a little waterproof little cover to it too. So that's kind of cool to have. Yeah. Another thing I bring is I bring um, an analog or wired uh, headphone splitter. Uh, that way we can share audio. A lot of the airlines um, still have the old school setup. It's not Bluetooth. Um, and we sometimes want to watch movies together or whatever, so bring that. Um, and then I also like to bring the lightning um, converter from um, a regular wired headphone a jack to the iPhone one, just to make sure you have that option. All right, so I like to have like a little kit of some smaller items just put together uh, so it's really easy access and they all don't fall and get all super disorganized. Uh, but in this, I'm going to have chapstick. That's a no-brainer. You go to dry places, you just can't anticipate it. Um, I have these wet wipes. They're like moisturized. Um, it's really refreshing when you've just been on a long flight. You just want to wipe your face down. I got gum, obviously. Please, please use this. I don't know how many flights I've been on where people's breath is just killing me. So help the world and just... Just take care of your breath, please. Um, I also like to put in there uh, these essential oils. Um, these are awesome, at least if you get uh, like a peppermint one and uh, another one for like pain relief, but, or lavender scented. Um, you put the peppermint oil like just on your temple and I'm telling you like, I thought it was just kind of a gimmick at first, but it's so refreshing when you're just super tired and it just kind of, I don't know, makes you feel just a little bit better. Um, what else do I have on your side? Tissues, obviously. I have ample ibuprofen. You get so achy when you're on flights. I have a mild uh, uh, laxative. Like when you travel, you're gonna get backed up at some point. You're out of your element, you eat weird food. Highly recommend bringing you know, one of your choice just to have one in in case because it sucks to be like that when you're traveling. Um, I also have some sleeping pills in here, like some Advil PM when I really can't sleep on a plane. 
Um, and another tip, uh, which I'm gonna renew pretty soon too, is I, I like to bring Lunesta, which is like uh, prescription sleeping medication, just to have for travel. So they'll just give you a really small dose. And um, for me, just to be asleep, like, oh, oh, uh, to stay asleep on a plane is really hard for me. So I need something, I'm like a horse to be knocked out, and that stuff works awesome. You wake up and feel refreshed. Uh, yeah, I got some like uh, mineral-based eye drops in here if your eyes get dry. So yeah, that's like my little care pack that I always keep with me. Uh, I don't know about you, but I think it's pretty hard to keep your hair looking fancy when you're traveling. So I just prefer to always have a hat and a beanie with me. And the bonus of the beanie too is you can just like slide it over your eyes. So if you don't have an eye mask with you, it's just like dual purpose. <laughs> And also make sure you always have snacks on hand. Beef jerky is a sure thing. Definitely a go-to. Uh, pack some protein bars and some trail mix as well. I will also never leave home on a trip without one of these memory foam uh, neck pillows. This is essential. Um, I like these kind because you can really smash them into different uh, shapes and I like to put it even be behind like my lower back for lumbar on certain seats and it's awesome. So, or when I'm like, on the window side and I can just put it in between like this. Um, it's great, so must have for sure. Yeah, don't go for like those inflatable ones. Find one that's actually real memory foam and spend a little bit. It's totally worth it, trust me. Those other ones are crappy and they just feel so uncomfortable. They're just not ergonomic at all. Although I don't have it on me right here, um, bring some travel poopery if you haven't heard of it. Uh, you don't know where you're gonna end up, and even on the plane, uh, people are like waiting outside. And if you have to go to the bathroom on the plane and you like walk out and you just dropped a bomb, that's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, it's just uncomfortable. So why not save everybody, bring those little sprays of poop uh, poopery, and just uh, do us a favor with the scents once again. I like to also obviously bring a pair of my favorite sunglasses. I've literally left so many times I bring my sunglasses. It seems so obvious, but. Just thought I'd throw it in there. Some of these are obvious, I know, but um, I promise there's some more in here that are gonna help you out. All right, a few more uh, device-related essential items. Like I said, I bring my iPad Pro, um, and then it also has, obviously, um, a cover that I can fold it so it can be like this, which not just for viewing purposes, but I also bring um, a Bluetooth keyboard, so that way it makes shifts as like a, a laptop. So that's pretty awesome, I like doing that. And then I pop on my AirPods. I don't leave home without my AirPods ever for trips. Um, the newest ones that just came out, uh, I think the 2.0 versions, uh, they have even an hour longer battery life, which is pretty awesome. They'll last, they'll last for most flights, especially how fast they quick charge. So you can switch between the wire and come back to them. Uh, but obviously there's plenty of earbud uh, Bluetooth choices out there if you don't like the Apple. So you never know when you're gonna have like an extreme layover that might be overnight or whatever. You don't have all your luggage. Um, pack a pair of socks and uh, some extra underwear for sure. Maybe even a small t-shirt that's light if you can. And yeah, that wraps up at least the uh, personal item packing. So let's move on to what's next. All right, number seven. So this is related to what you wanna put in your carry-on or your checked bags. Um, I'm not gonna go over all the really obvious stuff that you probably wanna bring based on wherever you're going, what the climate is and what that, whatnot. But um, I like to bring actually an Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, it's super small and portable, and then that way I have all my accounts logged in for Netflix and HBO, Amazon Prime, and Hulu and whatnot. And you know, you don't know where you're gonna end up oftentimes, whether it's an Airbnb, or you're staying at someone else's place, or it's a hotel and they just don't have really great programming options. Uh, most TVs will have an HDMI connection at this point. You just pop that in, and then what I do from there is I just make my iPhone a hotspot and I connect that way and I can just stream all the shows I want. So I think it's pretty sweet. All right, so you've probably heard of tiles at this point. Maybe, maybe not. Um, these are pretty sweet. Uh, you can buy one, I think, for 20 bucks, but I like to get the four pack. And uh, I put one of these uh, in my wallet. I put one in my carry-on, my check luggage, and my uh, personal item bag. Um, the proximity is pretty crazy on these. And uh, in some instances in bigger airports, you might be able to track it down if internally they get mixed up and don't know where your bag is, but it hasn't necessarily got on another plane. I have had that happen. And obviously a plethora of other things that can happen when you travel. It's just another way to track down your precious items. All right, these deodorizing little sneaker balls are awesome. Um, not only do I put them in my shoes, but I think they come in a six pack. 
And I like to have a couple just floating around in my luggage overall. It just keeps everything fresh and if there's any like dirty laundry in there, it's just helping with excess moisture and whatnot. Um, and on that note of laundry, I usually bring just like a plastic bag of some kind um, that has a, a zippered seal. And then I put my uh, dirty laundry in there as I'm traveling, it just helps keep it separate for when I get back. It's easier to unpack, I just dump it right in the dirty clothes. And then in addition with clothing, I like to bring two hangers, a really thin wire one, because I'm like I said, I like to be totally lightweight as possible. Um, and then one with clips. So I like to always work out um, and use the hotel gyms or whatever when I travel. And right after I work out, like my, my clothes are soaked in sweat. And so what I do is I just hang them up by where the uh, air conditioning is and, or a window in the hotel. And then by the time I get back, they're dry and not disgusting, you know, versus just stuffing them in your luggage all moist. That's not a good call. All right, so this might be, just be a thing because of what I do for a living with the modeling work and whatnot and always have to be camera ready. But I like to bring um, a pro travel blow dryer. This one's by Drybar. This one's awesome. It's super small, but it packs a punch and does an awesome job because you just don't know what's going to be in the hotel room or if at all. Okay, number eight, moving right along. Wear travel friendly clothing. Don't pick stuff that's going to be super annoying and uncomfortable or hot. Uh, what I like to do is go with thin layers and just build upon that, but it's all really lightweight stuff and I can fit it all in there and it's still really insulated at that point and it just fit, it's stretchy, it's comfortable, a comfort, I can't emphasize that enough. So what I tend to wear is what I have on right now, which is like this stretchy long sleeve type of shirt. It's got a little bit of elasticity to it. Um, just a quarter zip. Um, you can find these anywhere, they're pretty common style. This one's by Viore. Um, so I have this on and I just basically have some uh, black jeans on that have a little bit of elastic in them too. They're just from Zara and they're really comfortable. So I either go with that type of outfit uh, or I go with something that's uh, like athletic based. Uh, there goes my phone. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but to, to wrap up just like the casual outfit, I uh, usually do these Chelsea boots. They're super comfortable and they slip on and off. Choose something, at least footwear wise, that slips on and off. Because maybe if you don't have TSA pre-check or just for whatever reason you don't go through, it's easy to put them on and off, obviously. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I tend to go with um, like an athletic wear outfit and athletic shoes. Um, and in addition, I like to bring a couple really light jackets. Um, this one is kind of, it's super thin, but it's kind of those ones that has a little bit of down in it but crazy thin, light, and I put that under, and I put this over, which is kind of like a Lululemon sort of uh, windbreaker type jacket. Between those two, I'm pretty much good, unless I'm going somewhere like, you know, it's New York in the winter, um, I would bring like a pea coat. But yeah, that's pretty much how I roll a majority of time. All right, we're almost there. Number nine, choosing a bag. Um, I tend to go with a couple different style bags, just depending on what my vibe is uh, for the trip. Um, one might be on more on the athletic uh, sports side and the other more just kind of fashionable, casual look. Um, this is a leather bag by Coach, it's super durable, I love it. It just kind of goes with everything and it's timeless. It has a decent amount of compartments inside and ample storage space, but it's still gonna fit under the seat okay. And uh, yeah, I really love this bag, it's pretty simple. But again, it has good organization. Um, next up, I have this bag from ASRV. Uh, they make amazing products if you, if you haven't checked them out already. But what I think is cool about this one is that there's a detachable piece right here. So you could kind of put a lot of those, those items you want just at your seat and then stow it away up here for the other stuff you probably won't grab during the flight. And then that way you won't be kind of like scrunched for leg room by pushing the whole thing under your seat. You'll save some space. Um, this has amazing organization and it's super lightweight. Uh, again, lightweight is so important. And it also has a compartment on the back to kind of stuff everything from tablets to laptops, which I think is crucial as well. All right, we're there, we're at the end. Number 10, choosing a suitcase. This is pretty crucial in my opinion because it could be super annoying if you get a really crappy one it has bad wheels or it just wasn't designed well. I mean, God, I, everything about travel can be uh, super annoying if you just don't get the right things because it's just going from place to place and going up stairwells and staircases in Europe, all these things can just be super annoying. So 
Anyways, um, if I could, I would get like one of the Samsonite uh, carbon fiber models that just like are as light as a feather and extremely strong. But those are gonna be up to like $900 plus. Um, so maybe someday, um, Samsonite hooked me up if you want, to be awesome. <laughs> but in the meantime, if you wanna be budget friendly, um, go to Ross, uh, Marshalls, TG Maxx, and look for some of the Calvin Klein models. Um, I've had this one for a long time. And what's cool with them too, I've had some in the past that um, maybe weren't as good as this particular model. I don't know which one this is. Maybe you can see, I think it's the Rome, like R-O-M-E. Um, but it's just been awesome. Like uh, the last one I had, um, eventually the zipper broke and it wasn't this particular model. Like I said, it was Calvin Klein, but I saw this card inside and it said like lifetime warranty. And so I had bought it at Ross, like super cheap. I contacted the email, I told them what happened. They're like, sure, uh, you wanna pick one out from the website and just let us know, we'll ship it to you. Free of charge, it was crazy. Calvin Klein not paying me to say that or whatever. I, I was just really impressed. But pick one that's really light when it's empty. Don't make the mistake of getting one that's too heavy or you're just gonna be overweight on luggage real fast. Uh, also, uh, getting one with an expander is nice too, just so you can really, really get more room out of it if you need to, or keep it compact. Get one where the wheels roll in every direction. I can't tell you how important this is. Um, it's just a lot more uh, strain on your arm when you're always having it tipped. It all adds up when you travel uh, for an extended period of time. Get one, before you get it, keep trying this. Make sure that this thing seems like it's made well and it pushes down really easily because that always breaks oftentimes. And the most important is the quality of the zippers. Find one, it doesn't have to be Calvin Klein, just, but just make sure it has really heavy duty zippers and you can tell that it's not gonna get stuck easily. So once those break, that's it, you're done. You're not gonna get that repaired most likely. So that is absolutely crucial. Um, let me see, what else did I miss? I'm pretty sure that's what I wanna talk about for the luggage. I mean, obviously you can find one that has a lot of organization inside, that's great too. But this video isn't just about luggage, so I was trying to keep it short. Uh, anyway, so that, yeah, that wraps up my top 10 uh, travel tips for you guys. Uh, some things I know were obvious in there, but maybe there was something in there that was helpful. I'd love to hear from you. Just let me know uh, anything that's worked for you because people do read my comments. and I read everything as, as much as I can with a given time of the day. Um, I appreciate you being here. Please do subscribe before you go. Like I said, I'm trying to have new videos each and every week. And again, the stuff that I listed, uh, a, a decent majority of it is gonna be in the link in the description of the video in my Amazon shop, so you'll be able to add that fairly easily. Again, I'm Weston Boucher. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate your subscription again uh, before you leave, and I'll see you in the next video.